I don't know about you, but I often struggle to get good colors out of Lightroom with my Sony RAW photos. The skin tones sometimes just feel off. And I mean, honestly, it's probably not even Lightroom's fault. It's I just suck at Lightroom. Anyway, so when I shoot both photos and video, my videos that I graded in Resolve look great while the stills feel completely different. So when I saw that DaVinci Resolve now supports Sony RAW photos natively, I had to test it. We're gonna look at how to set up the project properly, a couple of workflows that actually make sense, and finally how to export the photos so they look as good as your footage. We already have a couple of video clips in here in a timeline with uh, a look that I quite like. They are graded and we're gonna later on transfer this grade to the photos. But first of all, let's set up the project correctly. Uh, my project settings are set to Ultra HD because it's video 16 by nine and color management, uh, it is DaVinci YRGB, timeline color space, DaVinci wide gamut, intermediate because it gives us a big color space to work with and output color space Rec 709A as I work on a Mac. Uh, I know DaVinci fixed this recently, so you wouldn't need to select this one. You can also select this, but I still have it on. And that's that. Also, of course, make sure to, especially if you're on a Mac, uh, enable this, use Mac color display profile for viewers. If you want that this, the viewer matches your exported results, this is a really important setting. But now let's import the photos, which is really easy, by the way. Um, as DaVinci Resolve now natively supports the photos, here we have the Sony RAW photos. We can just select them and pull them into our media pool. And that's it already. Now the first thing we will do is sort them. Uh, we can select the list view and scroll over to uh, resolution. And because some of them are landscape, and some of them are portrait. So we want to sort them by resolution. So now if you go back to the thumbnail view, we have all of the portrait ones and then all of the landscape ones. And what we're gonna do next is create two timelines, uh, one for portraits and one for landscape. Now let's begin with the landscape one because the photos don't have the same resolution as video and also not the same aspect ratio, we need to set the timeline settings differently. So to find out what resolution your photos are, you can click here on the info button. So it shows 4240 by 2832. And so we'll go to the timelines, select the landscape one, hit right click timelines and timeline settings. So now we Deselect use project settings. So this means for this timeline, we have separate settings and we type in the resolution of the photos for 240 by 2832. And also um, you can leave all of this the same, but for color, uh, since photos are read, not as Rec. 709, but actually as sRGB, it does make sense to change it to sRGB here. Now we'll save this. And actually it's easier if we delete the portrait one again and just copy this one now, the landscape one. So Command C, Command V, and we rename the copy one to portrait. And now the only thing we need to change here in the portrait timeline is this checkbox, use vertical resolution, hit OK. And now if we open this timeline, you can see it is already this, the right aspect ratio for portraits and this one for landscape. So now let's pull in some photos and let's grab this one. And we can also get this one. And now let's switch to the color page and let's see what is actually happening here. Because as you see, this already looks quite contrasty. It doesn't look like log at all. And that's because DaVinci already applied some kind of color space transform uh, into Rec. 709, as you can see here. But we actually don't want to use Rec. 709. We want it to change. So we don't choose camera uh, metadata, we choose clip here. And now we can set it to color space and gamma we like. And in that case, it really makes sense to use S gamma 3 Cine. 
and slog3. And so what we have here now is basically very, very close to something like a, an slog3 video still. So I can apply, for example, uh, color space transform as input. I'm going to choose S log three and S gamma three cine and use rec 709 here. And to adjust the exposure and white balance, I could basically use the raw tab here, but um, I kind of pr prefer using the tools I use anyways when I usually grade S log three. So uh, to adjust the exposure, I go to the HDR wheels here, choose color space and gamma again. And now I adjust the exposure like this. Uh, we can add some contrast, uh, some saturation. And yeah, this is just a super quick, pretty neutral look. Another super easy way would be to use um, only the film look creator, basically one node. Um, again, as color space input, we choose S log three and S gamma three cine and choose rec 709 as outputs like this. And now we can adjust exposure here. Um, well, I would probably reset this first. Yeah. Uh, adjust exposure, add some, some saturation. And by the way, if we hit shift and F, we get this kind of full screen view, which is quite nice to see really what you're doing if you only have one screen. And this is just a super quick, nice way to add a look to your photos with only one node. Uh, let's do before and after. But now let's say we want to match the look of the photo to the video. So what we can do is switch to the video timeline and um, we just clean up this quickly. And let's grab a still from this clip here, which is now saved to the stills gallery. And we switch back to landscape. And now we can just, uh, let's reset this. And now I can just apply this by a middle mouse clicking or right click and apply grade. And now it looks really different, much more contrasty and dark. But if we do some adjustments, first I'm going to lift the exposure and I'm going to reduce the contrast quite a bit like this. Let's see what that looks like. If we compare it, this is the video still, by the way, right here. If we compare it, this is the photo. And well, without a lot of work, you can see it's looking very close already. So the only thing I had to do is basically adjust uh, the exposure in bits and the contrast. And yeah, it works the same for um, portrait photos. Let's add this one, for example. And let's go to the color page and uh, apply this grade. And it looks absolutely terrible. I don't know what happened here. Ah, yeah, okay. So this wasn't correctly applied. So we can change to clip um, S gamma 3 cine and S log 3. And now it looks better. Uh, and again, we might have to do some slight adjustments um, for exposure and the contrast. And I think you get the point. But now you might be wondering how can we export like 20 photos without a nervous breakdown. And it's pretty easy. So we switch back to landscape. One way to do it would be um, using the file export and export uh, frame as still function, which just really exports one JPEG. But it's only one JPEG at a time. and even though you could assign a keyboard shortcut, which I use a lot, by the way. So I can only recommend doing this if you search for um, frame as still. And you have this one here and you can just assign a keyboard shortcut. But in that case, it would take too long. So if we had, I don't know, for example, all of these photos in here and we wanted to export all of them, that would take some time. And so there is a better way. We switch to uh, the color page. 
you can just create a new still album. Uh, we'll call it photos. And let's select all of the pictures we want to export. And now we just click here on the, on the viewer and select grab all stills. And first frame or middle frame doesn't really matter because it's all the same frame. And now it starts grabbing the stills. And now we have them all here. And the only thing we need to do now is select everything again. Uh, hit right click, export. Uh, just choose any location. Let's create a new folder, photos. And again, we choose JPEGs and export. And now what we get is a folder full of JPEGs and also a DRX file, which we don't need. So we can just uh, sort by type and just delete all of those files right here. Yeah, and now we just end up with all of the JPEGs. So yeah, that's the full workflow. Um, and for me, it's probably not about replacing Lightroom. I just see it as a tool so I can exactly match the look of my photos to the look of my videos. And I'm probably still gonna use Lightroom and still suck at it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.